Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys how to convert your physical computer into a virtual machine to deploy on your QNAP NAS. We're going to be doing this today with VMware vCenter Converter. We've already done a video utilizing VHD, virtual hard disk uh, um, software, a very old one known as disk to vhd We're going to use something a little bit more modern now, but not a huge amount, let's be honest. And we're going to be using VMware Control Center to do this. This VMware converter will convert your physical machine into a virtual equivalent. Now, it's worth highlighting straight off the bat that I have already finished this video right now. If we go onto the QNAP in question, there is the virtual machine right there. What I'm going to be doing is showing you how I got here because a lot of the steps in this video take literally days to do. Not hours, days in some cases. So I've finished it just like a cookery show when they tell you how to make it and then they pull out the one they made earlier. This is the one I made earlier and I'm going to show you how to convert your physical computer like the one I'm working on now into its virtual equivalent here. As you can see, this is the virtual machine of the physical machine that we're using right now. And we can heighten and change that display quality, but that's not really that relevant right now. So let's make our way through this guide on how to do this. What are you gonna need? Well, first thing you're gonna need is a QNAP NAS. You're gonna need a QNAP NAS that's got at least a four core Intel based processor inside. So we're talking Celeron, ID, um, ideally you wanna talk about a Pentium, but you can get away with a Celeron as well. Um, also make sure you've got at least 4 gig of memory because although this VM I'm running here is only running on 2 gig, it's worth highlighting that you are going to still need memory to run your QNAP NAS system in the background as well. Next, you're going to need to have an external drive because <clears throat> when you create the virtual equivalent of your physical PC, that virtual drive cannot live on your physical machine. It has to be exported onto an external drive. There's two ways to do that. One, you can go onto the QNAP NAS and create a, an external drive. You can access the NAS and then create a mapped network drive. And then you can export the physical image that you're creating with the VM tool and export it onto that mapped network drive, if you like, like so. But it's worth highlighting that your network speed will heavily dictate the speed at which this virtual machine is created. And therefore, Although you can map a network drive and map any one of these folders and make them network accessible like so, and then actually send the virtual machine you're creating to this uh, mapped drive you've just created here, I would recommend using at least a USB drive or higher speed connected to the computer. Make sure it's got enough storage to be larger than the machine that you are cloning. As you can see, my physical machine here is 764 gig. The USB drive I'm using is a great deal bigger, almost two terabytes in size. Now, once you've got those tools, you're gonna need VMware vCenter control uh, converter. Very easy to find, a simple Google online, you can find it, it's a completely free tool to download, and it's been updated as late as 2017. So not exactly up to date here in 2020, but not too shabby either. Once you've got that downloaded and installed, you can operate it real easily. Do make sure when you do run it, you run it as an administrator because an administrator account or an admin on your PC is going to be needed to create a virtual clone of your physical machine. So make sure you've got your external drive connected or you've mapped your network drive if you're going to do it that way. Open up VMware vCenter and head to Convert Machine. From here, you make sure you select the option that the PC you're using is powered on because it's the virtual, it's the machine you're using. And make sure you select this local machine. The other options respond to remote machines you might be cloning uh, from the other way around. But for now, this local machine is what we want. Click next, moving forward, and it will uh, it will double check how you want this VM to be created. Most of these default options will serve you fine. You will be able to just rename it if you so choose, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You, I would choose VMware works, Workstation 11 to 12, but you can dip around to different versions if you so choose. I would stick with the defaults though. And finally, where you want the virtual machine to be saved. E is my external drive, but if you did want to use that external mapped network drive we created earlier, it is available here. Just remember, 
it will make creating the exported VM a great deal longer to finish. After that, click Next. And at the moment, it's saying it's created because I've done it earlier on. So we're just going to name it something slightly different so we can proceed. From here, it will then highlight the hardware values of your physical machine and how they will appear on your virtual machine. So you can scale that memory accordingly. At the moment, 15 meg of memory is pretty big. We're going to be converting this onto a QNAP with just 2 gig of memory. So do go ahead and change that value if you so choose, as well as other options if you want along the way. This will allow you to create the virtual machine and scale up and down accordingly when you create the virtual machine. But just bear in mind that changing these values may completely cease functionality of your virtual machine on the NAS platform because you may change hardware values that are the core operating parameters of your physical computer. After that, click Next, and from here it will summarize everything so far, and when you're ready to go, click Finish. Bear in mind though, before you click Finish, that you are gonna need to leave your PC on for at least a day in most cases, maybe even longer, with this external drive connected. So do not proceed with this bit until you know you are ready to have the PC left on for a huge length of time. So from here, click Finish. It will start submitting the job and it will enter here. Now, the first time it tells you is going to be, I'm not gonna say a lie, but it's optimistic. It's chances are it's gonna say that the job will be done in hours, not days. That number will fluctuate massively. And the virtual disk, uh, sorry, the VMDX file that it exports, the VMware virtual image, will arrive in a destination you select. As mentioned earlier, I've already finished this job in advance. So let's stop this job for now, and then from there, make our way over to the one that we've created. As mentioned, I've already created this virtual image in advance using the VMware tools that we've just described. And it's spat out the, the virtual um, image that we want. And there we are, VMX and VMDX. These are the two core files you're going to need, which you can transport them in the folder you've created or as individual files. The next thing you need to do is get these files onto the QNAP NAS. Go to the QNAP NAS and open up File Station. From File Station, you need to choose the directory that you want your image to live in. I have a whole folder filled with images here and I've already uploaded it to this folder. You can just drag and drop it directly into this folder and it will upload automatically. As you can see, there is the two files I've created earlier on. There's, there they are, ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is make our way into Virtualization Station. As mentioned, I've already created the virtual machine here. What you need to do though, because you're not going to have this screen here, once you install Virtual Machine, uh, virtual, Virtualization Station 3 for the very first time and gone through the setup options of setting up a virtual network switch and more, head over to the Import VM option. Then click down to the Image Converter option. In the Image Converter option, select the folder that's got the VMDK file that you wanted to create, uh, that you created earlier. In my case, I've got it down here and it's inside this folder. Select the VMDK file you created and then select where you want the file to be spat out, where you want it to be finished. Because what's gonna happen now is Virtualization Station is gonna convert that virtual machine image into a standard ISO. So in my case, I wanted to go directly into the download folder and click OK. If I click OK, it will now start converting this image. This can take anywhere from 30 minutes to five or six hours, depending on the power of your NAS. I'm gonna cancel this job because I've already done this in advance. We head over to the file station option, you'll be able to see that I've already created this virtual image already down here. There's the IMG file I've created in advance. From here, we now need to just deploy our VM. Head over to the virtual um, import VM option again, and this time select import VM. From here, say that you want to find a VM image on the NAS, and then click download and find the VM image you created earlier. In my case, I've already created it, so it will be present in these folders for me. 
and now I can export the VM successfully. Although right now I'm, in, I'm exporting the VMX file I uh, found earlier on, it is possible to use that one that we created earlier on by going to browse. I'm sorry, if we go into the create VM option here, we can then use that converted IMG file if we'd rather do it that way. If we go into download, we can scroll down and th then we will find our virtual disk. It's that straightforward to create VMs in this environment. And it is recommended that when you do export a VM from a physical computer and turning it into a virtual machine, that you use these two values here, as these are by far the easiest options to navigate. But if we make our way back in and then create that virtual image that we're going to be using today and click OK, we then click Next and it will ask us to assign hardware values to this VM, the number of CPU cores we want to dedicate to it, the amount of memory we want to dedicate to it from the NAS's own um, values and own hardware structure. And they're very easy to pull over and quite straightforward. As mentioned, you can upload other images as well if you want to um, change if you've got a Windows CD in the background, and there's lots more options too. You can even select where you want the VM to live on the NAS, which I went for the Homes folder with lots of different versions of VMs living here. On top of that, you have to select what kind of CPU method you're going to use, because chances are you're not going to be using the exact same CPU in the NAS as you're using on your virtual machine. So you can select which option best suits you, or select pass-through. I always select the default option, as it's never let me down yet. And apart from that, if you when you click the import um, button down here, it will then import this virtual machine onto your QNAP NAS. Once that's done, it will look a little something like this. This button won't be green because it's still waiting for you to deploy your VMware virtual machine for the very first time. When you do, just click that green button and it will deploy. You can even tailor and change a number of these options very easily from changing a USB connected devices all the way through to taking snapshots of the VM so you can do A-B testing and more. You can even share access to the VM very, very easily. And once it boots for the first time, it will boot you into the virtual equivalent of your physical machine. However, it is worth highlighting that things aren't always as straightforward as that. All too often, if you're anyone that's ever built a PC from scratch, you'll know that changing and configuring the hardware values of a system, such as upgrading the memory on a pre-existing computer, or building a computer from scratch, is very rarely a smooth thing. So do be prepared for the odd hiccup along the way. Ways to counter this include making sure you've got enough memory for your VM to work successfully, or making sure in the settings menu to add an additional CD DVD ROM of a downloaded copy of Windows 10. Windows 10 is free to download from Windows own store and if you download that version it will also give you the option to repair Windows just like you would if you change the memory or PCIe cards in a physical PC that are preventing traditional boot. And always you can go into boot options such as BIOS and more in a VM just like you can in a virtual computer. And there you have it. Once it's done, it will look a little something like this. It will open up into a brand new tab where you can access your virtual machine and configure all the options just as you need. Configuring a virtual machine from a physical to a virtual equivalent using VMware's converter and QNAP's own virtualization station is always lots of fun and there's lots of testing that can be had. Remember that you don't just have to do this with Windows platforms. You're open to Android, Linux and a number of other virtual machine platforms too. So, if you found this video helpful, do let me know in the comments, and otherwise, thank you so much for watching, click like if you enjoyed it, click subscribe to learn more, and visit the links in the description to more information on virtual machines all throughout 2020. I'll see you next time.